The CAC Sabre, colloquially known as the Avon Sabre, stands as a landmark in Australian military aviation, embodying the nation's transition into the jet age during the Cold War. Developed by the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation in Melbourne, this fighter was a heavily modified version of the North American F-86F Sabre, tailored to meet the Royal Australian Air Force's strategic needs in a volatile Asia-Pacific region. Introduced in 1954, the CAC Sabre was Australia's first jet fighter, replacing outdated piston engine aircraft like the P-51 Mustang and de Havilland Vampire. Its development was driven by the need for a high-performance aircraft capable of countering emerging threats, including Soviet and Chinese forces, amid conflicts like the Korean War and communist insurgencies in Southeast Asia. Unlike the American Sabre, the CAC version featured a Rolls-Royce Avon RA7 engine delivering 7,500 pound-half of thrust, 50% more than the F-86F's J47 engine, necessitating a redesigned fuselage and larger air intakes. It was armed with two 30mm Aden cannons, a significant upgrade over the F-86's 50 caliber machine guns, and later variants could carry AM-9 Sidewinder missiles. The aircraft's production, which began with a prototype in 1953, showcased Australia's burgeoning aerospace industry, blending local innovation with licensed American and British technology. With 112 units built, including the CA-26 prototype and CA-27 production models, the CAC Sabre was a testament to Australia's ambition to achieve a degree of self-reliance in defense manufacturing. The procurement of the CAC Sabre was a strategic response to the Royal Australian Air Force's urgent need for modernization in the early 1950s. As Cold War tensions escalated, the Australian government sought a fighter that could match the performance of Soviet MiG-15s encountered in Korea. After evaluating British options like the Hawker Hunter, the Royal Australian Air Force selected the F-86 Sabre for its proven combat record and availability through U.S. licensing agreements. In 1951, a contract was signed with CAC to produce 111 aircraft, later increased to 112, with North American Aviation providing technical assistance. Production began with the CA-26 prototype, followed by the CA-27 Sabre Mark 30, Mark 31, and Mark 32. Deliveries commenced in 1954, with Number 3 Squadron receiving the first operational aircraft and full deployment across squadrons like Nasr 75, 76, 77, and 79 was completed by 1961. Each aircraft cost approximately 100,000 pounds in 1950s value, a significant investment for the time. Despite challenges in adapting the Avon engine and retooling CAC's facilities, the program was a success, delivering high-quality fighters tailored to Australian requirements. This local production not only bolstered the Royal Australian Air Force's capabilities, but also strengthened Australia's industrial base, setting a precedent for future projects like the Mirage 3.0. The CAC Sabre was designed as a multi-role fighter, capable of air defense, ground attack, and pilot training. With a maximum speed of 690 miles per hour, or Mach 0.92, a service ceiling of 52,000 feet, and a range of 1,150 miles with external tanks, it offered versatility for Australia's vast and strategically critical region. Its armament, including 30 millimeter cannons and up to 5,300 pounds of bombs or rockets, made it effective against both aerial and ground targets. The Mark 32's ability to carry Sidewinder missiles enhanced its air-to-air -air combat potential. The Sabre's primary role was to defend Australian airspace and support regional allies, particularly during a period when Soviet naval expansion and Chinese influence raised concerns. It also served as a training platform, preparing pilots for the complexities of jet warfare through No. 2 Operational Conversion Unit. The aircraft's agility and firepower made it a cornerstone of Australia's deterrent strategy, projecting power across Southeast Asia and the Pacific. The operational history of the CAC Sabre reflects its adaptability and strategic importance. 
It equipped multiple Royal Australian Air Force squadrons and saw significant deployments during two major Cold War conflicts. During the Malayan Emergency, Sabres from Numbers 3 and 77 squadrons operated from Royal Australian Air Force Butterworth, Malaysia, conducting armed reconnaissance and ground attack missions against communist insurgents. Though combat was limited due to the guerrilla nature of the conflict, the Sabres' presence bolstered Commonwealth efforts. In the Indonesia-Malaysia confrontation, No. 79 Squadron Sabres, based in Uban, Thailand, and Butterworth, provided air defense and deterrence against Indonesian incursions. While no direct engagements occurred, their readiness was critical to regional stability. Domestically, Sabres based at Royal Australian Air Force Williamtown, New South Wales, conducted air patrols and mock interceptions to counter potential Soviet or Chinese threats. The aircraft also participated in joint exercises, such as Bursatupadu Padu in 1970, enhancing interoperability with U.S. and British forces. Despite a strong operational record with no combat losses, several Sabres were lost in training accidents, reflecting the inherent risks of early jet operations. These deployments underscored Australia's commitment to Western alliances and its role as a stabilizing force in the Asia-Pacific. By the late 1960s, the CAC Sabre's retirement loomed as newer technologies emerged. The aircraft's subsonic performance and basic avionics were increasingly outmatched by supersonic jets like the Soviet MiG-21 and the Royal Australian Air Force's incoming Dassault Mirage 3.0. Frontline service ended in 1971 with squadrons transitioning to the Mirage and training roles at No. 2 OCU ceased by mid-1971. The final flight occurred in July 1971, marking the end of the Sabre's 17-year career. Post-retirement, many airframes were scrapped, used as decoys, or preserved in museums like the Royal Australian Air Force Museum in Point Cook and the Tamora Aviation Museum. Some were sold to private collectors, and a small number were exported to Indonesia and Malaysia, where they served into the 1980s. The retirement process was orderly, driven by the need to modernize the Royal Australian Air Force's fleet to meet evolving threats. The legacy of the CAC Sabre is profound, both operationally and industrially. It bridged the Royal Australian Air Force's transition from piston to jet era warfare, providing critical experience in high-speed tactics, jet maintenance, and multi-role operations. Its deployments in Malaysia and Thailand strengthened Australia's regional alliances and demonstrated its commitment to collective security. Industrially, the Sabre program showcased CAC's engineering capabilities, proving Australia could adapt complex foreign designs to local needs. This expertise influenced subsequent projects, including the Mirage 3.0 and F-111C. Culturally, the Sabre remains an icon of Australian Cold War aviation, celebrated for its sleek design and historical significance. Its primary replacement, the Dassault Mirage 3.0, introduced in 1964, offered supersonic performance and advanced radar, taking over air defense and strike roles. The General Dynamics F-111C, delivered in 1973, complemented the Mirage by assuming long-range strike duties further enhancing Australia's strategic reach. The CAC Sabre's contributions to Royal Australian Air Force readiness, regional deterrence, and Australia's aerospace industry endure, cementing its place as a pivotal chapter in the nation's military history.